Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're going to look at the It's a Trap API script for Roll20. This script allows players to automatically detect traps when their passive perception is high enough, and will automatically trigger traps and roll damage when it's not. Note that because we're using an API, you will need a pro account in order to do this. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. Now, we've worked with traps before. We've created macros and worked with control tokens, but this script allows us to really take things to the next level and automate just about everything related to traps. Now, the script itself is part of the standard Roll20 script library. And if you're not familiar with how to install an API script, I'm gonna pop a card in the upper right that shows you how to do that. But the thing to know is that It's a Trap is present for pretty much all of the various systems present in Roll20. So I've installed the It's a Trap D&D 5e generic version, but if you look in here, you'll see that there are It's a Trap for D&D 3.5, for Pathfinder, for Starfinder, for Burn Bright, pretty much every one of the major systems has an It's a Trap associated with it. And when you install that It's a Trap, you're going to get a bunch of helpers that come in as well. So when you install the script, there will be a pop-up that says, hey, do you want to install these dependencies? Just go ahead and click OK to that. That's expected. That's going to give you all of the helper scripts that are needed in order for the script to work its magic. So, let's take a look at what kind of magic we can work with this script. Okay, so first thing we're going to talk about is over here on the Macros tab. Uh, the script is going to install a Trap Maker macro. You're just going to put a check mark right next to that one so that it shows up down here. That's just going to make your life a whole lot easier as we go through the setup process. You see I've got my rogue in the dungeon, and I want to put a trap for her to find down here in the hallway. So what I'm going to do is go over to my art library and I'm going to grab a graphic for that trap. I'm going to use this spike pit here and I'm going to drag that onto the GM layer. So you'll notice I'm on the GM layer right now. I've moved the trap to that layer. I want the trap to be a little bit bigger than just one square. So what I'm going to do is hold down the alt key and then I can resize the trap and drag it, again, while holding Alt, drag it around so it won't snap to squares, because I want to put this in a particular location. It's going to be kind of between all of these squares. So I've got my artwork on there. With the trap selected now, again, we're on the GM layer, I'm going to click the Trap Maker button. And if we go back to the chat tab, you see now we have a whole wizard that's been whispered to us of how to set up this trap. And there's a lot of stuff in here. I'm not going to go through every one of these settings today. I'm actually going to do a second video later on in the month to cover the more advanced options, but we're going to go through the basic ones that you'll need right now. And the first one of those is just the name of the trap. So right now it's defaulted to a cunning trap. Let's click on name and we're just going to call this spike pit and we'll submit that. Now, when we submit, what happens is the script updates the wizard and you get the buttons again. So you notice now, Spike pit. Okay. And a lot of this stuff looks good. We're going to leave this just as it is. What I'm going to do now is skip down a bit to the detection properties. So I'm going to say max search distance. This is how far away can my character notice this? And so I'm going to say they can notice it from 10 feet away. Click submit. Again, we get the refreshed wizard. And you'll notice now on the GM layer, we've got this aura that's been drawn. That's the radius that someone can detect the trap from. So now we've found that we're going to put a message in the chat when someone notices this trap. I'm going to say, you notice a seam in the floor. And we'll submit that. Now we want to set up some behaviors for when the trap is detected or when it's sprung. So we're going to click this reveal the trap button. And we're going to say here, reveal when activated. So should the trap be revealed when it's activated? Yes. Should it be revealed when it's spotted? No, this is a pit trap. And just because you've noticed a pit trap, that doesn't cause the pit trap to spring open. So I'm going to say, no, we don't want this to be revealed. That is, we don't want the graphic to move to another layer when it's been spotted. 
when it's been activated, sure, if somebody steps on it, we want that graphic to come forward. But right now, if it's just been seen, we don't want that. All right, now, which layer are we moving it to if it is sprung? So we'll say we're moving it to the map layer. And there we go, okay. So now when the character detects it, it will not be revealed, but if they step on the trap, it will be revealed. Okay, we're gonna skip these external script properties. Those will be in the next video. What I'm gonna do now, attack bonus. We really don't need an attack bonus for this because you fall in it, but we will put damage in here. So let's say that we're gonna do a 3d6 pit trap. Uh, miss for half damage, no. We're not going to do that, but saving throw, yes, we will put a dexterity save in there, and we'll give it a DC of, say, 10. Okay, and should we show the results to just the GM for that saving throw? No, we want that to go to everybody. And then lastly, the passive perception DC is how good your passive perception has to be in order to see the trap. I'm going to set this low right now, and we'll say 10. So at this point, I can switch back to the token layer, and I can start moving my rogue. And as we move, what's gonna happen is she's gonna hit that area, and you see now there's a ping that fired on the map, and a yellow circle has been drawn around the trap as well. So she knows where this trap is. And there's been a message posted here in the chat from Admiral Akbar saying it's a trap. And Cher has noticed a trap, she notices a seam in the floor. Okay, now you can't say the phrase, it's a trap, without referencing everybody's favorite Mon Calamarian. So, what do you do if you don't want it to say Admiral Akbar? Well, if you go back to the script page and you go to not the it's a trap with your system, but the helper it's a trap, come down here and at the very bottom there is a section that says announcer Admiral Akbar. And you can change it from Admiral Akbar to something like DM or something like that. Okay, so my player has now noticed this trap. And any good rogue at this point is going to attempt to disable it. So how do we go about disabling the trap so that it's safe to walk across this particular area? Well, what you're going to want to do is jump to the GM layer again. And I'm just going to use the advanced keyboard shortcut this time. I pressed K and that gets me onto the GM layer. I'm going to highlight the trap, click Trap Maker again, and then at the very top here we're going to set Disabled. We're going to click on that and we're going to set it to Yes. Submit that and now that trap has been disabled and what that means is our rogue can just walk right across it without any trouble. So she just walks right by. You know, I just drag her right across there and she does not trigger the trap because she successfully disabled it. Okay, so now let's put our rogue back on the other side of the room and let's reset this trap. So what we're going to do is just go back to the GM layer and I'm going to select the trap again. I'm going to put disabled back to no. So this is not a disabled trap. I'm going to delete the yellow circle from the token layer. So I'm just going to jump back to the token layer, delete that circle. There we go. And now things are kind of back in the default state. So let's change the trap's passive perception DC. I don't want my rogue to be able to notice it this time. So to do that, we're just going to go back to the GM layer, run Trap Maker again, and we're going to change the passive perception DC. I'm going to make it really high this time. I'm going to make it an 18. My rogue only has a passive perception of 11, as you can see here. So she will not be able to see the trap this time. I'm also going to adjust the saving throw. I want to make this a little harder. So again, it'll be a dexterity save with a DC of, let's make it a 16 this time around. And we'll submit that. And again, we don't want to only have the DM see the results. So we'll keep that as no. Okay, so now my rogue's going to start moving down the hallway. She's going to hit the aura. And you'll notice now she doesn't get the ping, right? Her passive perception is not high enough to detect this trap. So she's going to keep walking. And as she walks across the trap, you'll see we get this message from it's a trap saying, hey, or there's a trap here. You tried to make a dexterity save. We only rolled a 10 versus a DC of 16. So we failed that. 
and our character needs to take 12 points of damage. You also notice that the trap itself has been moved to the map layer. So the graphic is visible, there's now a big pit in the middle of the hallway. So our player has fallen in the trap, taken damage, and her token was moved into the center of the trap. That's controlled by this setting up here, the trigger collision. And you'll notice that's set to move to center of trap token. We can change the behavior of this. We could say move it to the edge of the trap, or we could say don't do anything. But I like to leave the default there of center because, yeah, now if we fall in there, we are moved into the middle of the pit, and now we need to get a rope or have somebody fly down and pull us out or something to that effect. So now that our trap's been sprung, how do we reset it? Okay, well, what we can do there is go to the map layer because that's where the graphic currently is. And I'm going to right click and move it back to the GM layer. That's really all there is to it. Once the trap has been triggered, put it back onto the GM layer. And now my rogue can fall into it all over again, just like that. So there you have it. That's how we can automate traps using the It's a Trap API script. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.